All right, we are taking off with episode 74 on the Air Hug Community Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Air Hug Community, or welcome if it's your first time here. So I would love to share with you what the Air Hug Community is all about. First of all, why the name Air Hug? Well, it's interesting, and I don't know if I've told this story in a while, so I'm going to retell it. At the height of COVID, I had been driving down a busy road in our area where we live, and I saw this amazing sign, and it just simply said, it was a sandwich board, and it was a bright yellow sign in black letters, and it just said Air Hugs. And I thought, Oh my gosh, yes, that's what we all need right now is some wonderful air hugs. And that really haunted me and I kept thinking about it. And at this time, I was also preparing this podcast and didn't have a name yet. But it reminded me of airwaves and it reminded me of how we really can reach out and support each other. And so this podcast is all about a great big giant air hug where we can put forward a way to grow and support and learn and be inspired. It's a place for us to pay it forward, at least for myself and my guests, where we have stories and conversations that actually are just pretty much relevant to all things. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and say it, midlife. And the reason I say that is because we tend to gravitate more towards midlife topics around here and how we can live better from today forward. And so a lot of the stories and guests here will have a flavor on how you can optimize your life and what you can learn from the stories and conversations that are told here. And so I thank you for coming in and taking a listen. Hi, and welcome back, or welcome if it's your first time. Here we are in early 2022, if you're listening to this the day or weeks that it gets released. And if you're listening to it later, we have just come off of the holidays from 2021 into 2022. And oh boy, there's a lot going on. And gosh, the inspiration for this episode has come from so many different things. I got to be honest with you. When I sat down to record this and plan out this episode, actually before I sat to record it, I was so uninspired. I was thinking about all sorts of things and I'm like, these are boring topics. And then a couple of things came together in my head. Um, Number one is yesterday would have been my dad's 100th birthday. Wow, go dad. And I will say he was an awesome guy. Probably most of us think our dads were awesome guys, but no, really, my dad was an awesome guy. He um, did live to be 94 and he was really, really active, healthy, and despite being overweight, fit, probably until he was about 80. And somewhere around, I mean, it's a rough thing, but somewhere around that point in time, He seemed to just want to sit in the chair and it's like his goals didn't exist anymore. And it was really sad to watch him deteriorate for the years. It was a a slow but a fast deterioration, if that makes any sense. But I've talked about this with my siblings and it's like we don't want to go that way. And we really all felt that the fact was he gave up. He didn't have any goals. And this morning, just a few minutes ago, I was looking at my cat who is 17 years old. I know I talk about my animals a lot and he's an awesome cat and it's not that he's giving up. Well, he might be a little bit. He doesn't go outside anymore. He used to always go outside, but I watched him climb up onto the little shelf where we keep his water and we keep it up there to keep it away from the dogs but he fell down and he's been doing that a lot lately. And I'm like, oh, Rocky, I'm sorry. And it's just like time is catching up with him. Now, I don't know if the cat has any goals, but I do know that my dad gave up on his goals. And today I want to talk about our goals because this is a time of year, again, if you're listening in real time, where goals are a hot topic of conversation and they're on our mind. And the thing is, 
people are strong out of the gun, you know, first week in January, let's go and do our goals. We're going to do this. And I actually asked all my clients back in December, in early December, I said, I want you to think about this long and hard. And I want you to give me your goals because really I'd like us to be on the same page, but I can't help you if it, I don't know how you want to be helped. So anyways, the responses that came in were amazing. There were lots of really interesting responses. And I'm, I did find that some of them were very vague. And, I was, and I've seen this year after year about people will come to me and they'll say, well, I just want to tone up. I just want to firm up. Or I need to lose weight. And I'm like, well, let's refine that a little bit more. So, and as I've been thinking about goals, I swear the universe brings us things, right? I opened up an email yesterday just from um, an online business person who helps other online business persons. And I actually don't even, it's kind of weird, even read his email every time. But for some reason, I don't know, the, the word fun was in the title. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll open this. And he talked about a tweet that he saw online. Good God, what is her name? She's a really famous disability person. Well, I think she's famous. Hold on. I got to tell you her name. Okay. So anyways, her tweet was all about fun goals versus Emily Lado. That's her name. Emily, Emily Lado, L-A-D-A-U. Um, look her up if you haven't because she's fascinating. But she goes, okay, not doing smart goals this year. The world's a mess. Time for fun goals. And then she writes, flexible. Life happens, things change, goals shift. Uplifting, bettering myself isn't a punishment. And numberless, life wouldn't be radically different if I read 29 books this year instead of 30. Okay, Emily, I get your point, okay? But you know what? I think smart goals are still the way to go. And I kind of marinated on this. At first I was like, ooh, that's kind of cool, fun goals. But I'm like, you know what? I really don't think it's going to cut it. Now, you can think about this any way you want, but fun, flexible, and or fun, uplifting, and numberless can actually coexist with SMART goals. Now, have you heard of SMART goals? Many of you have heard of SMART goals, and if you haven't, SMART is an acronym for a goal-setting, what I would call unofficial set of rules or guidelines, okay? And SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So why do I recommend SMART goals? First of all, goals don't have to be a punishment and they don't have to be a terrible thought and they certainly don't need to be temporary. In the, I think where people fall short and they don't like actual specific goals is because they see goals as a finite thing. But actually, we need to see our life as a journey with no destination, okay? The destination, folks, is actually death. So it's not about getting to the destination. It's about finding a way to enjoy the journey. And if you can find a way to enjoy the journey, then having SMART goals will not be viewed as a, po a punishment and you don't need the FUN acronym. Now, I love the FUN acronym because I do think we should be flexible and uplifting. I'm not so sure about the numberless part, okay? So let's talk about SMART, SMART goals. All right, let's start with number one, specific. I'm going to use the weight loss example here because that's a, or, or getting fitter example here because this is a big one that comes into play. When people say to me, they come to me and they're like, I want to lose weight. And I'm like, well, why do you want to lose weight? Let's get into the why and the purpose here and then we can get specific. And they'll be like, well... You know, I'm tired all the time. My clothes don't fit. I don't like the way I fit. And I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed with the way I fit just for my own self, not for what other people are thinking of me. But in fact, I do care what other people think about me. And you know what? We all do. And that's not a bad thing. Okay. Not that that should rule our life, but it's, I think it has an influence. So a more specific goal than lose weight, air quotes here, would be to say, I would like to drop a size, eat consistently healthy, and follow a training plan that's right for me. 
So the big part would be, I would like to drop a size. Now, everyone knows if you're going to drop a size, you're going to look better than you did before, right? So that's going to, and you're going to feel better, right? But if you're going to do this by starvation, you're not going to be following a plan of being healthy. So you're not going to be eating consistently healthy and you won't be able to follow a training plan that's right for you if you're on one of these quick little detox or a short-term diet. So dropping a size is a specific goal, but how are we going to make it measurable? Well, I think that's pretty obvious, right? We have our current size and the next size would be one less, right? Beautiful. So that's what we're talking about. All right. We have the current size and the new size. That's all. And there's a whole thing out there. I don't even know if I should get into this about not wanting to take up less space. The fact of the matter is if you have more fat on your body than is healthy for you, you do want to take up less space, but not necessarily a lower number on the scale, right? Because if you are training consistently with a plan that's right for you, you could and very well may be building muscle, which means the scale number may not change, but the size of your clothing may. Okay. Achievable would be the third in the S-M-A-R-T. Is this goal achievable? Listen, you don't want to drop a size in 10 days, okay? Because that might make you resort to behaviors that are A, not sustainable, and B, not healthy, all right? So achievable, dropping a size within a specific time frame. How about I'd like to drop a size, a gene size by in five weeks. That's reasonable, right? Maybe you'll do it in less than five weeks, but don't hold yourself to it. Give it a reasonable amount of time, right? So it's achievable to drop a size in five weeks with consistently healthy eating and following a training plan that's right for you, period. Okay, now let's make it realistic. And that would be the R part of SMART. So we've got specific, we've got measurable, we've got achievable. Let's make it realistic. Okay, so we're trying to drop one size, not four sizes, right? Looking at a staircase, right? We're not going to get to the top or climbing a mountain. We're not going to take a, get to the top without taking baby steps. So instead of having one goal for the year, maybe you have monthly goals or goals every five or six weeks, right? Drop a size in five or six weeks. If you do need to drop four sizes, maybe you're going to try to drop two sizes. Once you, once you do drop a size, maybe you'll work on the next size. But let's not rush it, you know, because A, you don't know how your body's going to respond, right? And B, we're keeping it realistic. All right. The last part is make it timely. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about, right? We want to be consistent and we want to be timely. And one of the things you want to think about is in terms of time, this might not be what you expected. You probably expected me to say, yeah, five weeks, one size, right? How about five weeks of consistent nutrition behavior that is healthy for you and five weeks of consistent workouts in a training plan that is right for you? This is what we're talking about, okay? Something that is actually sustainable. It's timely and it's sustainable, meaning that you could do it over time. Now, this is my own interpretation of timely, and if you do a Google search, on SMART goals, I think you're going to find that other people interpret it differently. But what we're trying to do here is enjoy the journey. We're not going to be very strict for five weeks and then feel like we've gotten to our destination, right? Let's say you only need to drop one size. What would be your goal after that? Okay, that would be very easy. It's to maintain your nutrition and fitness so that you can maintain your size and your health. That's what I'm talking about. So can you make this fun? Can you make it uplifting for yourself? Well, yes, that's up to you. It doesn't mean that goals have to feel punishing unless you decide to take on that mindset. But if you take on the mindset that this is a journey of a lifetime and that you are uplifted by treating yourself well versus treating yourself and we had a, I had a post about that the other, a couple of weeks ago, 
treating yourself well versus treating yourself is making the journey more enjoyable in itself, right? You get to decide if you enjoy this journey, right? If you are too restrictive because you're trying to reach an unreasonable goal in a small amount of time, yeah, you are going to be miserable, right? And if all of a sudden you decide that the only way to do this is to walk 70 minutes a day power walking, you know, are you going to love that? No, I don't think so. So you want to take on the fact that you find a way to enjoy the journey and it starts with your mindset. You know, do you want to enjoy being healthy or do you want to end your life like my poor dad did when he gave up, you know, and just decided to sit in the chair and not do any more work, you know? And honestly, he had, he had probably 20 good years of retirement where he actually was really active. He played golf, he bowled, he did uh, Mr. Fix-It jobs because that's what he did. But when he actually put himself out to pasture, he put himself in that recliner, that's when he actually started to decline. And unfortunately, it was awful to watch. So anyways, I, my hope for you is that you can find a way to keep your goals definitely smart, but it's up to you to own them and to make them fun and uplifting. And as far as numberless goes, I don't agree with that. I think you need numbers. You need to have a goal to work for. And it's not just lose weight or lose 10 pounds. Do you have any questions about this? I would love to hear from you. So let me know. You can always send me a message over on Instagram. I am at Judy Arizoza on Instagram. And that's probably where I get most of my messages, period. And hey, we are all in this journey together. And the thing is, it can be fun if we want it to be fun. All right. So listen, happy new year again. I love to say happy new year. By the way, here's a little side. When I see someone who I haven't seen since um, before new year's, no matter what month it is, I say happy new year. Sometimes I'll run into someone in like June and I haven't seen them, you know, since the, the previous calendar year. And I'll say happy new year. And they look at me like, are you out of your mind? And I'm like, no, I haven't seen you since last year. Happy new year. Um, Anyways, I think that's very funny because honestly, it's a fun, it, it always gets a fun response. So listen, happy new year. I won't say it again next week. (laughs) when we're on. By the way, we're on every Tuesday. So tune back in next week because I've got more fun episodes coming down the pike here and some very interesting guests.